we're going to go over a question that was posted on Reddit. I think this is going to be a whole new line of videos. So it'll be fun to see actual questions posted that people are trying to find answers to. So in this one, let's take a look. This is from Kempar. Kempar is Pritz. Uh, the name is irrelevant. So let's get to the question. Okay. Hello, everybody. Looking for help to automate a data entering process. Please see below for images and text to better explain my issue. All right, so we have a table here, three columns. Image one is the starting point. Every line is an observation of the occurrence of a particular DNA mutation in a sample I analyze. Okay, so essentially we have a table here with three columns. It has an ID, the random data we are to ignore, and then you have a mutation. So you have ID one, it has mutation one, two, and three. ID two has mutation one and three. And ID three, as you can see. So each ID can have multiple mutations. Then here, image two shows another table which is located in the same Excel, but in a different sheet. The ID column is the same sample ID I entered into table one. Okay, I'm going to summarize quickly what he's after. He or she is after, I don't know. So here we have a table with the IDs, which you know we saw here in the first table, the random data we are to ignore, and then we have mutation one, two, three, and four. Essentially, he's creating like a grid and he wants to know ID one, which mutations are they assigned to? And they want a one whenever there's a match found. So if there's a if there's an ID one and there's a, a mutation one, put in a one. Mutation two, put in a one. Mutation three, put in a one. Mutation four, put in a zero. So I guess that means ID one, there is no mutation four. So let's take a look real quick. So one, ID one, there's no mutation four. So that's why there's a zero. Okay. Let's look down here. Uh, okay, this is a good recommendation from someone using a pivot table. I think a pivot table would be an excellent option to get to this answer. But just so we can stick to the table that uh, this requester wants to fill, we'll just try and you know satisfy it with a formula and see if that works. Now they did mention here they have a Mac with Excel version 16. So we can't use XLOOKUP or XMATCH or anything X because that's only available in Microsoft 365 or Office 365 or Excel 365. So we're going to use an if statement paired with a match function to find uh, the ID and the mutation. We're also going to use an ISNA function so we can handle the error message that might be produced if there isn't a match. because so we, we want it to say zero or one. If you just use a match formula, it's only going to show you the location or the row where there was a match, but we want it to say zero or one. All right, so equal sign if ISNA, so we can control the error message, open paren, match. Okay, this is where we're going to try and find the match. We're gonna enter a dollar sign so we can lock down the I, two, so ID, so ID one we're gonna look for, and mute one, so K one. So what this is doing is combining these two bits of data. It's gonna say one mute one. Oops, all right, so we're now going to enter a dollar sign next to the one. And then comma. All right, now that we've entered the lookup value, we're now going to enter the lookup array, which is where do we want to find this? We want to find this match in sheet one. We want the formula to look for the entire column of A and the entire column of C every time it finds that match. So we're going to click on A and column C. So we have to combine them here as well. So now row two, that's really one mute one. And then comma. We want an exact match, so enter zero, comma, sorry, actually, two close parens, then comma. Now, this is where you're going to tell it what you want to produce when it comes across a match or not a match. So 
here we're going to put in a zero. So if there is an if it if it doesn't find a match and you get an error message, we want it to say a zero. Now that's reference to the ISNA. So for for the ISNA, if it's true, that means there is an error. So we want it to say zero. And then comma, value of false, you want a one. So if it doesn't come across an error, we want it to say a one. Then close paren and then hit enter. All right. But before we continue with dragging the formula around, we want to lock down A. And you can do that quickly by um, uh, hitting F4 within the reference. And then down here, F4, and then hit Enter. All right, so now we can drag this across and then drag it down here. And here we have the product. So wherever there is a one, there was a match. So let's look at one quickly. Uh, let's see. So ID4, according to this, ID4 does not have any matches. So let's take a look. As you can see here, ID4 isn't listed at all. So no matches. Let's see ID8. It found a match with mutation two and mutation four. And with ID8, here's two twos and one four. So it entered a one. It didn't count the number of times. That would be a different formula. It just you know, tells you if there was a match or not. All right, so this is the first of probably many videos to come on questions posed and posted on Reddit. If you have any questions and you want to see a video about it, leave a comment below. Please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.